How is Richard Bandler, the devil of neuro-linguistic programming, using nested loops in his seminars to influence your mind secretly without you knowing? Uh, I could have been showing actual clips from Richard Bandler, which I am not going to do on purpose because my previous channel was deleted because of that. His review team, or I don't know who, came after me and made sure the channel was deleted after some copyright strike. So I am not going to show those clips again. However, I can still talk about the topic by itself without using the videos. So, first things first. Um, all the stories he is using on stage are not necessarily uh, hidden complex advanced nested loops. Some of the stories he says on stage may, may just be a basic metaphor to lead your mind from a point, B, a point A to a point B, solving a problem through some parallel thinking, or some stories might just be pure uh, humor. Like he says a lot, he likes to cure people from their seriousness. So some stories will just be outrageous and funny just to make, get people to laugh and loosen up a little bit. It is maybe sometimes just to change the actual state of the audience. And what he's doing on stage is always very uh, depending on who is the audience in front of him. Who are the people listening? Uh, are they reacting to him? Are they just cold and very close-minded? It always depends. So there is no like clear structure he's going to use in every seminar you can watch from him. It is always depending on what he wants to do during that day and how do people react? Uh, are they cold? Are they warmed up? How are they? Now, to get into the actual structure of those nested loops, uh, basically when a story is arising, a story that he is going to start. So right here we have the beginning, the middle, the end. Let's say this is a loop, this is a continuous loop, and this is just expressing the story. What is going to happen whenever he wants to jump into nested loops, and we will see uh, during this video why does he do that, but the structure of the nested loops, the way he is using them, is that he's going to cut the story in the middle, and that's usually what creates all the confusion among people because they are like, but uh, is he uh, just too old to remember what he was talking about or what? Because it may sound like he's just a senile to just start stories and never finishing them like that, but there is a purpose behind that and what he's going to do during that break, if we can call it that way, during that break he is either going to start another story or he is going to give some process, some procedure like uh, now close your eyes and uh, take a deep breath and do some uh, uh, guided hypnotic um, conditioning of some sort or some uh, switch pattern or whatever he wants to demonstrate during the seminar. But he's always keeping in his mind what he has started right here, what, what, which story can he jump back onto to if he needs to. So more specifically, why is he doing that? Whenever he is cutting a story in the middle, no matter what he's doing, either starting another one or giving some mental procedure or cutting himself to start interacting with a, a member of the audience directly face to face, what he's doing is creating confusion. He's going to jump into different directions. And this confusion in the middle is basically here to prevent potential resistance from the people listening. Either he will create, he will give some suggestions or some very important embedded commands just before the confusing uh, aspect, the confusing state, or he will give the, the important suggestions just after. Basically, when you induce confusion like that, it is because you want to reduce, lower the level of conscious resistance of the people listening. He might be talking about things that seem abnormally simple to the point where people would be arguing with, oh, but it cannot be that simple. I have been struggling for 20 years. It cannot be just that simple. And since he has been enduring the those kind of talks for during his whole career, I think, at least uh, as far as NLP, when NLP was not very known yet. Many psychologists and psych psychiatrists were always criticizing and blaming that, oh, there is no such thing as a fast phobia cure. <laughs> I have a degree, I know better than you. And when, when you have been interacting with those guys for 20 years plus, maybe, I can understand the desire to just stop arguing 
consciously and just shut their mind down uh, with some storytelling because it is just making the whole thing go faster, I think. So either he's going to give some very controversial suggestions or give some very simple procedures into the unconscious mind of the people listening, uh, simple suggestions for well-being, for handling their conflicts in their life, and people usually their conscious mind barks up, even not out loud, but inside their own mind, it barks back with, oh, but it is not that simple. Oh, I tried that before. I'm smaller than that. And he it is just so annoying to keep arguing consciously with people like that, that cutting the story in the middle and jumping into something else actually shuts down those uh, resistance, those defense mechanisms. It is just shutting it down. And when he jumps back to the story later, all those arguments, blah, 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 it is just too much information. If we include all the stories he has injected in the middle, uh, right here in the middle, it is just too much work for the conscious mind of people trying to resist, to at the same time maintain the resistance and at the same time understand all the things he has been talking about during the middle when he has jumped into another story or another mental procedure, another topic or anything like that. Sometimes those stories right here in the middle will also be overly complicated. He might talk about a very advanced psycho-cybernetics or a very advanced quantum physics stuff, which is sometimes not even useful in any way in terms of the conscious understanding and linked to the seminar at hand, but it is just to overwhelm overwhelm the mind, the conscious mind of the people listening so that they will just drop the defenses, all the fears, all the wounds. They will just ease up all of that because they will be like, uh, like even like you and me, like it's not a bad thing. It's just when too much information comes in, we're just like that. Uh, <laughs> and then all the messages that, that he wants to program us with will just go by much more easily. Sometimes he might also just start one specific story because one person from the audience uh, asked him some questions during the, uh, the, the break uh, at lunch and he wants to address the, the unconscious mind of that person specifically and he might cut the story in the middle and start the story a metaphor specifically for the person who has been asking such or such question. Whenever he does something like that, you always have to take care to understand the double level of communication. On the first level, he is talking to you, he's speaking about somebody he met, another seminar he conducted, whatever the topic is of the story. On a double level of communication, he's measuring how the people react, how do they respond, and based on the things, the messages he wants to transfer into people's unconscious mind at this point, he is always keeping track in his mind of what did people react to the most. If he said, if he mentioned one story and people all went, oh, Obviously, he will keep track of that and go, go, go back to that story later if he's encountering some resistance or people doing oh, blah, 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 blah. If they are starting to argue with oh, it's not that, not that simple He will just get back to the one story that, that everybody liked that way He's, giving, he's kind of firing back the end core, metaphorically it is an end core, the end core of the story that produced the, the good effect, and he will get back the audience into a good positive state. And from that good positive state, maybe he will uh, jump into another uh, more important set of suggestions or set of procedures he wants people to engage into once they will be back at home, stuff like that. So that's why people quite often report having changed just after the night, after the seminar, or uh, after the second day or third day with him, and they don't really know why. But the reason is because he he's measuring so many things when he has an audience in front of him. He's measuring so many things about uh, how to uh, interact with this annoying person, how to shut down the conscious defenses of that, per that person. And whenever he's discussing with the audience and measuring how do they react, how do they respond, he, can, he will always adapt the stories. It is virtually impossible to specifically track everything he's doing because he's also improvising. During a given seminar, many things he does are definitely things that were not planned when he started the seminar, but he's adapting based on who is in front of him, what is the overall topic of the seminar, adapting the stories. So this kind of double level communication means that every time he needs to introduce some very important message, very common that he gives, he introduces some confusion just after he gave the message, the, the suggestion, or just before, and he will jump to the, the conclusion, which will be all the suggestions about uh, some things like, uh, and if you start visualizing your 
yourself succeeding every night, then you will be happier. This one is overly simple, but you get the point. He might just jump into any kind of very important messages that he wants people's unconscious mind to obey to. And those things will just pass by much more easily if it was, if it is coming just after a moment where people were like, just lost. In the end, do you actually need to get that far, to get that complex, that advanced? No, you don't need to get that far to get results with your clients if you are a therapist or a coach. One guess I have is that he developed that art at this point. It is not even a technique, it is more an art to do it at that level. I think he developed that partly because of boredom. When you have been doing the same thing over and over again for years and years, it may just get deadly boring. Even if it is still impressive to people watching, it may just get boring. And if we get back to, for example, the book Flow, um, one essential component of keeping engagement in your career, keeping your um, some lightning imagination in your career and some enjoyment is to keep leveling up the complexity in what you're doing. When he got at such a level that anybody he had in front of him was changing effortlessly in 15 minutes, I guess he was trying to find the more and more and more advanced ways of making people change and even more complicated, making everybody change into a whole audience, even if there is 500 people at the same time. How do you make sure everybody is changing without actually taking care of every person one by one and questioning them one by one? What about you? What is your problem? making sure that the suggestions he is giving are fitting in to everybody's unconscious mind at the same time. And this is accomplished apparently faster, if we just study what he does, accomplished faster if you introduce some confusion to prevent people from thinking too much, thinking too much of the wrong things, so that they will just accept all the positive suggestions that he is transferring during his seminars. I talk much more extensively about this topic in my book, Covert Hypnosis in Real Life, um, available on Amazon. And you can subscribe to this channel if you enjoy the content, and you will see much more of that.